everyone, Xandris here. Uh, just thought I'd do a little video here. I just got back from seeing Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, I wanted to put my thoughts out uh, to all of you who maybe haven't seen it yet, which I'm probably sure a lot of you haven't, considering I got to see it a little bit before. Uh, some people actually got to see it at 7 o'clock uh, today, so which was pretty fun for me. Uh, it had a pretty empty theater. All in all, I guess a lot of people in my town didn't know about it. So, uh, yeah, yay me. I was actually pretty happy that I didn't have to deal with too many people, and uh, the crowd I had was actually pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to throw my thoughts out and kind of uh, put some opinions out, uh, what I thought of the movie. Uh, I'm not going to go in too deep into spoilers or anything like that. Uh, there might be some mild spoilers. Uh, so this is your warning that there might be a few things here and there sprinkled in. Uh, but I don't plan on ruining any major plot points. Uh, it's just a general, uh, my general thoughts on the movie. Uh, before I start, uh, I'm not going to be talking about trailers. Uh, because my showing didn't have any trailers. Apparently, earlier in the day, the projector for the theater that they were showing uh, Guardians in uh, malfunctioned, and they had to f finish uh, fixing it through the rest of the day. Uh, and we even had problems starting up. It started late, and then when they actually got it started, we had nothing but sound. We had no visual whatsoever. They actually had to restart the movie for us. Uh, so we didn't get any of the uh, any of the fun for trailer. So I have nothing to say on anything like that. So thank God I got to avoid anything maybe TMNT related because I'm really not looking forward to that personally. But we're not going to get into that because that'd be a two-hour tirade pile by itself. Uh, but uh, I am going to be talking here. You might see me looking off a little bit over towards this way because I have a few notes uh, to kind of keep myself on track. Uh, also, you might see some jumping because apparently the battery for this thing is under crap. Uh, so if you see a cut, it'll be uh, just because of uh, the video camera or maybe because of other sounds. I'm sure you've seen that on, on my last video where I had some fit cross fades going. Uh, I live near train tracks, so, you know. Uh, but going from there, and my prattling on, let's start off uh, with my general thoughts of the movie. I enjoyed it. I had fun, and I, I mean that from... I can't say from beginning to end because the beginning isn't exactly something very fun. But I was interested and it caught my attention from the beginning pretty much because I am a complete noob when it comes to anything Guardians of the Galaxy. I know zilch about them aside from names and that's about it. Uh, and from one episode of Ultimate Spider-Man and that was about it. Uh, outside of that, I went in pretty much blind, just knowing some of the cast that was going to be in it, and nothing really of the premise, since I know nothing about the history of Guardians of the Galaxy, but I was hearing a lot of good things from uh, critics ahead of time, and I was like, yeah, I thought I'd check it out for myself. Uh, so yeah, the general consensus for me is, it's good. Uh, it's fun, the action's nice. Uh, visually, it looks great. They really did a good job world building. Uh, all the locations they use feel unique, but don't feel so out of place that they couldn't exist, at least a lot of the time. Uh, I, I just, I was actually really pleasantly surprised uh, by how well they did everything uh, in my mind, not just with the visuals, but with the writing. Uh, there were a couple moments here and there where I could tell something was coming, but then again, I knew what was going to happen because when you see in certain superhero movies, you kind of can feel things out as they go. Uh, but the writing was good. Uh, the banter between all the main cast was fantastic. The comedy was right on cue for me. I loved every second of that. Uh, but I'm going to go on to the cast at the moment. Uh, just talk about some of the individual performances. Uh, and then I'll go a little bit more into the uh, plot a bit. Uh, but starting off with uh, Chris Pratt, who played Star-Lord, which was, I guess we can say, the main focus of our protagonist, since it's a group. Uh, but he's our, more or less, our fearless leader. Our, uh, <laughs> our rogue with a heart of gold, if you will. Uh, and I have to say, I love Chris Pratt. The moment you see Chris Pratt on screen, the first second you see him on screen, you feel something, like he's really become, you know, this character. And the, uh, just the second he removes the mask for the first time, He's got my, he, got, he gets your attention right off the bat. He is 
just spot on when it comes to wisecracking. Uh, you can feel a lot of the sympathy of the character. Uh, his, his expressions were very well to uh, pull on the audience to make you care what's going on, at least with his character. Uh, and he, uh, I think, played a very... <sighs> All right, sorry about that. I uh, had to do a cut because a train came by. As I was saying, uh, Pratt did a really great job uh, emo with emoting, and it's not like he felt like he was just acting, but he had fun. I could tell he had a great time uh, playing Star Ward, and I had a great time watching him you know, play this character. And again, I know little to nothing about the Guardians, so this was my introduction to them beyond one little episode appearance on a show that isn't theirs. Uh, and I have to say, I am interested uh, just from that alone to see more of their adventures and I'm really looking forward to the uh, very eventual sequel. Uh, moving on from uh, Pratt, we also have, uh, I think her name is Zoe, Zoe Saldana. I hope I'm saying that correctly. If I'm not, uh, please don't correct me. I'll read it later. I don't need a whole lot of that. But yeah, she played Gamora, our green-skinned vic uh, vixen in this movie. And uh, she plays a really good deadpan. Uh, and, and I mean that in the way that she's the stern warrior and, and it comes across and she doesn't become overly condescending she doesn't become aggravating she doesn't really have a damsel in distress moment uh, she's a very well developed character in my mind uh, fun she was fun to watch uh, they did really good with the stunt work with her uh, I don't know how much of it she did herself but it was well done uh, and she had, she had a few good lines. She really did. One, one in particular, and I'm not going to ruin it, but there's this one scene, and they're on a mining, in a mining facility for a meetup. And uh, her and Star-Lord are off on a balcony, and he's trying to put the moves on her because Star-Lord's pretty much a uh, quagmire of the galaxy. Uh, if there's a vagina, he'll conquer it. Uh, and... He's trying to put the moves on her. It's a very, very nice moment. It really is between them. You can kind of see where this is going. It's kind of romantic. And then she just goes around and just nice with her. She's like, I've heard about your ways and your... And I'm not going to say the joke. I can't do it justice. You need to see the movie. Ju uh, not just for this line, but it's one of the ones I think is going to be memorable. Along uh, with many others. And I'll get to those in a little bit. But... I really did enjoy her uh, part in this, and she was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, the next one is uh, Dave Bautista, which a lot of you might know as WWE's Bautista, former World Heavyweight Champion, Tag Champion, and so on and so forth. Uh, I didn't have high hopes for him in this because, frankly, I've never been a fan of him uh, as far as wrestling goes. So I was not really behind his acting chops coming into this. I was really pessimistic about his performance. And it feels clunky at times with him. But then again, he's playing a character that is... And I don't remember uh, exactly, uh, but he plays Dax the Destroyer. And I don't remember his the character's race that well as far as his alien race. But they don't understand metaphors. They take everything literally. So if you say something, uh, there's actually a line where it says, "Don't tell, don't don't try to use metaphors around you know him or his kind. It kind of, it just kind of just go, it'll just go over his head." To which he responds, "Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are great, Apparently, or something to that extent." He takes it as something literally saying something will go over his head, and he's saying, "No, I can physically stop it." And there's a lot of lines like that through the movie where he doesn't really get it, but where he just starts making observations, and it's just. Because he's serious, he doesn't understand a lot of it, and I have to say, I was I was pleasantly surprised uh, by Dave uh, Dave Batista's uh, performance a bit. Uh, the deadpan catching with the jokes, where he just sub some, says something completely straight faced, and just with the way the situation works, it was funny. That's not to say all the time his line reads were tolerable, but it was way better than I expected from him and uh, his action work was good uh, scenes with the wire work with him uh, considering he likely did most of his own stunts considering his time in WWE uh, I have to say the fights were good uh, with him 
uh, especially a couple of the wire work uh, stunts they did with him, uh, given some of the superhuman strength that Dax has. Or Drax, I'm sorry, not Dax. I am horribly sorry for completely screwing up that name. But, you know, again, trying to read notes and remember things a little bit from something I'm not familiar with. Uh, but yeah, no, I really did enjoy his portion of this. Uh, going into the next one is Vin Diesel as Groot. He says, I am Groot, most of this movie. Or, yeah, that's pretty much it. But Groot as a character, without talking most of the time, is hilarious. I can't really put a, it, it's kind of those things where he's almost childlike. He's incredibly strong and thoughtful and he's intelligent as far as understanding the situation and finding a way around it uh, when it comes to split decisions or being creative uh, with a way to solve a problem. But it doesn't say much. And we, uh, there's actually one scene where he takes down a group of bad guys. Uh, it's uh, Groot, Drax, and Star-Lord. They're fighting off this group of guys. And Groot just goes in. As they're walking up, they've just taken out a group of these guys. And here comes more foot soldiers. Groot just kind of steps up. Swats them away like a fly, more or less. I'm not going to ruin this because this is one of the funnier moments to see what's going on. It's kind of entertaining. But right at the end of him taking care of these guys, he turns to the camera and just smiles. An innocent smile. I mean, it's just like a, like a kid smiling. And that got the biggest laugh out of me. I, I just love that kind of really quick shift from a, something that's really action and serious and crown. oh, here's a funny joke. But this one didn't need words. So I really think that the... Uh, uh, special effects people did a great job on Groot. Uh, he was very well uh, done with his expressions. Uh, he looked great. Uh, Vin Diesel really did bring uh, a nice bit of emotion to the character as far as even with the limited lines, he got a, his uh, character across rather well. Um, of course, a lot of it had to do with the CG work, so again, great job on that. And of course, the... <sighs> The unmitigated success out of this is going to be Rocket for me. He was my favorite character out of this. He's hilarious. Uh, Bradley Cooper plays Rocket. And uh, <laughs> so many good lines. So many good uh, split-second wisecracks and jokes. I was just enthralled with watching Rocket the entire time. I have to say, he's going to be the uh, favor of the movie. I, I, I think, hands down, between him and Star-Lord, Rocket comes across the funniest uh, and his own charisma and just, he really catches the audience. When he's on screen, you're watching him most of the time. You might catch Star-Lord, but I think when it comes to the both of them on the screen at the same time, they work really well. All five of them work really well together. Uh, but Rocket for me just takes away. I love the CG work they did with him. Uh, it looks really well done. Uh, he was very well expressioned. It was fun seeing him come up with all these different uh, uh, gadgets, how to fix the situation. And he's a twisted motherfucker when it comes to some of his jokes. Uh, there's a joke in it with a prosthetic leg. I'm not going to go beyond that. But it involves a jailbreak, and he needs a prosthetic leg. And I'll let your imagination kind of go with, lead you where you think this goes. But I'm not going to tell you the uh, the uh, end of it, just because it's, it's it would ruin the joke for you if I did. But needless to say, it was fun for me. Uh, just watching those five. Uh, John, I think his name's John C. Riley. I'm not always great with names, but he was... Uh, and uh, Walk Hard and uh, Talladega Nights with uh, Will Ferrell. So, John C. Riley. Thank you. That's what John C. Riley was, is the actual name. So, again, if I completely messed up two seconds ago, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to remember names off the top of my head. I didn't write all the uh, side characters down, it's just the main ones we see most of the time. Uh, but he did good. Uh, Glenn Close was fine. Uh, all in all, on the good guy side, I. I enjoyed watching that. But of course, you can't really have good, good guys 
without equally good villains. Uh, the main thing for uh, this movie, um, I think his name is Lee Pace. I believe that's his name. Uh, he plays Ronan the Accuser in this, and he's a, a Cree uh, extremist. Uh, basically, this has to do with an interplanetary war between his people, and I'm trying to remember the name of the other race. Uh, I believe they're the Zandurians. I might be wrong again, because sometimes you're getting bombarded. I'm getting bombarded with a lot of names I'm not completely familiar with, as far as races and characters and that, so I'm having a hard time keeping them all here. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, the pace, uh, as far as Ron the Accuser, he's menacing. I like the character design. Uh, again, they went practical with him, not really much in the way of prosthetics, aside from uh, body paint and really good armor uh, and context and stuff, but he was a solid bad guy. I, you know, he was menacing. Uh, well enough, they really put on how strong he is, just by himself. Uh, and of course, anyone with a you know big fucking hammer, he wrecks shit. He will wreck your shit, and it shows. Uh, so I like him as a bad guy. I think they could have done a little bit more with him, put him more on the forefront. Uh, but pretty much it was more just uh, him going on a genocidal uh, rage against his race's sworn enemy that they just they had signed a peace treaty he wasn't too happy about it so uh yeah he decided he was going to destroy the entire planet uh going from that we also have uh michael rooker playing uh yandu and he's as far as i know he's a uh he's a collector he's not a collector but he's a uh scavenger part of a scavenger group basically they go around and try to find different artifacts or things that people hire them to go get and he brings, brings it to them, him and his group do, and they get money. So, uh, I, I, I can't really say what else they are, but he's the leader of the Ravagers, is the name of the group. Uh, he's entertaining. Uh, Michael Rooker is easily... He was hammy, and I don't mean this in a bad way. He was fun to watch. Uh, his character has this ability or has this weapon that's kind of like a, a long arrow. And he whistles. And this thing responds to the different ways he whistles. So it'll come up to someone's throat and, you know, keep them bay there or grab their eye. Or he'll completely and utterly scare you like a roast pig. All just on how he whistles. Uh, uh, the makeup was really well done on him. Uh, when he starts using his abilities, there's this piece on his head uh, starts glowing along with this so it's uh, pseudo telekinesis mixed with uh, vocal commands or I guess sound commands at this at this rate but uh, but yeah he was easily one of the he was easily a better bad guy as far as character wise for me out of the ones that he had uh, he gets a I think he gets a more screen time than uh, Ronan does. Uh, while Ronan is more physically imposing, uh, Yondu is <sighs> ruthless. He's ruthless in a completely different way. Uh, he wants his money. He he, he wants people where money supersedes everything for him. So if it comes where he's gonna get profit, come hell or high water, he's getting that profit. He doesn't care how many he has to kill. Doesn't care who he has to kill. He'll get his profit. And he's not some real big, bulky guy. He's, you know, he's a moderate build. You don't ever see anything. You know, it's not shirtless or anything in this movie. So I can't really say how much the character is supposed to be built. Uh, but he doesn't look overly physically imposing. He mainly uses uh, his... He's actually smart. I like this. He's not stupid completely. Uh, he just gets blinded by his own greed. But he has a confidence about himself, this character does, uh, where he knows he's going to come out on top. He'll figure a way to come out on top of this, and he doesn't doubt his own skill. And he usually does. You know, from this movie, he kind of does achieve a few things in this, on getting done what he wants done. So I find that fun. Uh, I do hope they bring him back for the next movie, uh, or at least one of the others. He was very fun. And another one for me, 
as far as a, a fun character that I was looking forward to seeing was uh, Karen Gillan as uh, Nebula. Now, for those of you that may not know, or if you at least watched my unboxing awesome episode from Loot Crate, I like Doctor Who. Uh, I am a big fan. I am a Whovian. And when I heard that she was going to be playing in the movie, that she was going to be playing Nebula, I was excited. And uh, I got to watch her, because this is a completely different character from her. She's not playing a good guy. She's not playing somebody that's concerned for other people. This is the first time I've seen her really be a you know, a bad guy, playing a villain, and uh, I get to, I have to say, I'm intrigued, and I want to see more. Uh, they didn't give her too much screen time, but the makeup work was top-notch for her, I think. Uh, she did really well portraying someone that, in a way, reeks of desperation with some internal struggles. It's there under the surface. You're not really seeing it, but you can see hints of it. And, uh, just the fact that she is willing to just say, just for some way, I'll kill them. She has her own personal goals, and she's willing to kill for them. Uh, they did, I don't know how much of her own stunt she did, but the stunt work with her fights were good. Uh, she really only had one fight. But uh, as far as the acting goes, I enjoyed her, and I think that they underutilized her. And I'm hoping that with the next movie, or at least whenever her next appearance is in the series, that they give her more to do. And there's one scene in the movie where they did really good with this effect. Uh, basically, uh, she takes a rocket, like nearly point blank, takes a shot from a from an RPG, close, pretty close range, from Drax, and she recovers from this because she's mostly uh, a lot of it's cybernetics, a lot of her cybernetics. And you see her kind of uh, sitting, you see a hand kind of sitting like this, and it's all wrangled and shit. And it starts cracking, and it's like it's coming, it's realigning, it's like her whole body is realigning back in. That's exactly what's happening. And it's surreal to watch. Uh, but the effect was really cool, and I was actually sitting in the theater like, oh! Oh god, that hurt! That hurt me just looking at it. But it was so, so well done. That effect was uh, kudos again to the to the CG team. Uh, the visual effects were spot on for this. Uh, but all in all, as far as the main cast goes, those eight people, uh, a good job. I, I really do mean that. A good job. A very fun. I cared what happened. I they their the way that the storyline went, the way they took things, was very smooth. I didn't get bored. Uh, the movie runs 122 minutes, and it doesn't feel like it. I mean, it's it starts off not very upbeat, not not bad. It's not a horrible start, but it's not a happy start, and that's all I'm giving you. Uh, but from there, from from point A to point B, it's pretty smooth. Uh, I think the screen, the script itself is pretty tight as far as flow. Uh, maybe not completely tight narratively, but it was something that it smoothly goes from A to B to C to D, uh, all the way, hit all these points, all the way to the end. And I didn't get bored once. I didn't personally get bored at all. I didn't get distracted. I didn't get agitated and sitting here thinking, you know, like sitting. It's, I didn't feel like I was sitting through Revenge of the Fallen, if that tells you anything. I didn't feel like I was sitting around for another, you know, eternity, waiting for it to end. I was actually, I wanted more. That it leaves you wanting more, and I think that's really the high point of a movie is leaving you wanting more. This movie, in and of itself, is fun. It's not perfect. It has its problems here and there. Some of it's acting, not a lot of it. Some of it's the acting. Some of it's the story itself. Uh, Thanos does make an appearance, and I'm sorry if I forget who the actor was that played him, uh, but finally get to see Thanos in all of his glory. And a lot of it's CG work, obviously, because of how Thanos uh, physically looks. I know very little about Thanos, uh, but I, know a little bit, I knew a little bit what he looked like from the comics and that. So this was a little bit what I was expecting from just that profile shot they had at the end of uh, the Avengers, the first Avengers movie. 
So, uh, yeah, when it comes to Thanos, he's not there much. But you can tell he's going to be a big threat. You can tell he's someone not to screw around with. Uh, but, uh... But there's uh, just a few points here and there where he's not there much. And it's like, you didn't really need to have him there so much. You could have mentions of him, or just his voice, or just a face, because they actually do a kind of Empire Strikes Back uh, visual communication thing where you just see a big uh, head imposed on the wall. Uh, <laughs> in fact, the first time I see him using this, uh, Ro uh, Ronan's walking into the room walk into this room to talk to, uh, I guess, Thanos' uh, handler. I, I can't say it, but it's like his, uh, what's the word I'm thinking, uh, his attendant, I guess. And I, I first thing I see is Rona's walking in, I'm waiting for him to kneel and say, what is thy bidding, my master? I mean, I went straight to Star Wars referencing in my mind the second I see this. And I know a lot of other people probably will too. Just from the way this guy's a cloaked figure, floating head and some guy who's in armor and everything comes walking in it's it, it, and that's just one of those things it kind of just struck me as funny uh, <laughs> uh but yeah i really did have a great time with this uh the music uh for me was very fun it's a very uh eclectic mix a uh, bunch of 70s and 80s pop and rock music uh, mainly pop uh, everyone has been hearing Hooked on a Feeling from every trailer, and it makes an appearance, obviously. Uh, but you don't hear it repeatedly throughout the entire movie, which I was hoping they wouldn't do, and they didn't. They actually had a good mix. Uh, yeah, everything from, you had that, and you had... Uh, I'm trying to remember the songs. I know they had Jackson 5 in there. I'm not going to tell you where that is, but Jackson 5 is in here, which makes sense for me. Uh, I grew up with a lot of the songs. So while I may not always know the names offhand, I know the songs well enough. So I was sitting here bobbing my head to the music. So the music, uh, the soundtrack in and of itself is really good. And the uh, actual theatrical track uh, that was composed specifically for the movie, uh, really good ambient sounds, uh, good beats. I really did think it fit a lot. And I think the uh, the licensed music, the all the other pop music really fit better a little bit more actually I think it fit a lot better than the actual score that they created specifically for the movie uh, the songs they picked really did add to the narrative for me uh, but yeah all in all Guardians of the Galaxy uh, gets a uh, B plus at the very least for me right into an A minus B plus territory for me while it's not a perfect movie it's fun this movie also knows what it is it's a popcorn fun romp space movie it's it is completely stupid at times and what you're thinking because you have to understand you're watching a tree man and a raccoon shooting down robots and f you just sit here and think and you're saying it out loud it sounds so stupid but the movie is very self-aware and has fun with its premise and I think that's what it is they they go into it. They know what they're doing. This is quirky comic book stuff. Something that no one would have expected to ever come about, considering everyone wants everything to be dark and gritty. This movie is bright. It's colorful. Uh, it runs through the, the entire gamut of palettes, as far as colors go. Uh, it, I have to say, personally, for me, uh, this one was just so fun to watch, uh, as far as uh, just looking at the space visuals. Uh, all the different nebulas in the background and galaxies and asteroid belts that are just like all oh, just off in the background were just amazing the sets the set work was fantastic the stunt work was good uh, i know i'm repeating myself a bit here but it's just i had a good time and it's actually one of the better movies i've seen in a while and i think this is something that you should see uh, i mean don't just take my word for it a lot of reviews are coming out that are very positive for it and are saying a lot of the same thing I am, that they that the movie is very self-aware, understands itself, what it is, its properties, and who its audience is, and who it wants to attract. Uh, but yeah, I see this doing really good in the box office, and another feather in the cap for Marvel Studios, and the uh, ever-continuing uh, series of uh, Marvel movies. And I really can't wait to see how the Guardians are going to play into uh, the overarching Marvel storyline for all the movies. Uh, I don't know if they're going to make an appearance in uh, 
Avengers Age of Ultron. I don't know if they are. I hope they do, or at least somewhat. The, some of them do at least. Uh, but uh, I do want to see more, and I can't wait to see the sequel to this movie specifically. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I really cannot give it enough praise. And I think it's going to be one of those movies that once it comes out, I'm going to get this to be one of my favorite ones to rewatch many times over. And something I have fun watching with my kids. Uh, although, warning. This one is rated, if I remember correctly, PG-13, and it earns it. The word shit is dropped repeatedly. It's just shit this, shit that. Uh, and I think that that's what caught me off guard a bit. It's just how liberally they were just throwing around just saying shit. And I'm sort of thinking, there's going to be kids seeing this. I know there are. And I just laughed about that alone. Uh, I had, I'm not a prude, so I have no problem with it. I just found it funny just sitting here thinking... There's a little raccoon person just basically saying shit's in the fan. And that just was fun for me. I loved it. Uh, it's a very juvenile movie, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just kind of... <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I had a good time. I, as you can see, I'm all smiles for it. And I give it a high recommendation. Um, as far as the uh, after credit scenes... Now, usually there's always one after the credits. There's a little scene after the initial movie kind of ends. The, it, the plot summarizes up. We have our, our falling action. Everything ends up. And it kind of cuts to a little thing uh, involving uh, Groot and Drax. Uh, again, I'm not going to give it away, but it's a, it's a fun little scene. It doesn't add anything or, you know, kind of throw any kind of foreshadowing or anything. It's just kind of fun. And it's a nice touch. And it, I think it's one of the reasons I enjoy Groot a lot. And I think... Despite myself, I enjoyed uh, Batista in this more than I really should, <laughs> but I did. And this scene was one of those, like just that little capstone of comedy on the end of it that worked for me, or so I thought until the uh, extra scene at the end, the the actual end cre after credit scene. And I'm not gonna ruin it because I can't believe it myself still what I saw. Basically, my words were this. I'll, I'll give you a reenactment, and I'm, I'm going to completely bleep out this, but they show someone that you don't expect on this. And I'm sitting here, I'm like waiting, and the collector's in this again. And it ends on the collector. They're looking at the collector, he's kind of having a drink. He, you know, I'm not going to ruin why he's taking a drink or what's going on around him. But he's getting licked by a dog. And this, and this character looks says, you let that thing lick you on the face? It cuts to this person, to this character, and I just look really blank. You're kidding me, really? And I said this out loud, and there was like eight other people in the theater with me, including a group of uh, uh, older women. I'm talking probably fit forties to fifties. Uh, and they're having a good time. They were actually just fun to listen to, uh, just laugh uh, at some of the jokes and some of the comments they're making during the credits. Uh, especially like the one that called Joe Quesada, uh, what was it, uh, Joe Quesadilla. And that, that just, that gave me a warm fuzzy feeling just hearing somebody just completely screw up his name that bad. Don't ask me why, it's a, it was cathartic. But, uh, but yeah, this ends just... It's a left field moment, this this scene. And when I say, when I, when I said what I just said on here out loud, people were laughing just because of my reaction to it. <laughs> and go see it. Wait through the credits. The credits aren't actually incredibly long. Uh, it seemed they actually used, a, they used the same kind of smaller font, but they actually branched them off to the side. I don't know if they've been noticed in every movie lately because I don't go to the theaters very often. Uh, but they had the speed going pretty well, so the credits don't take as long as they do for, like, Thor, The Dark World, which those credits took for ever to get through just to get to that extra scene. But, uh, but for this one, it goes by pretty quick. Uh, the Stan Lee cameo in this is... It's cute. It's fun. But then again, Stan Stan is fun anytime. Uh, but yeah. I think that's really all I can say at this point without completely rambling and running in circles. So uh, I'm just going to leave off with say, with one more time completely recommending this movie. Uh, go see it. 
Take your friends, take your family. Go by yourself if you have to. You can have just as much fun seeing a movie by yourself like I did. And, uh, everyone was working, so I had no way to get people together to go see it. Uh, but go see it. Have a ball. Get some popcorn. Pop that in your mouth. Have a good drink. Have some Raisinets. I don't care what you bring. You'll have fun. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've got to say for now. Uh, hopefully I can do something like this again soon. I don't know when I'll be seeing a movie next. Uh, but yeah, uh, I had fun. You'll have fun. Thanks for joining me and watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe down below and hit that like button. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, which is in my descriptions uh, for my channel. Uh, I'll probably put it in down the uh, description area too here. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, maybe I, I'm not going to give away anything, but leave a comment. Tell me what you, th uh, what you think of the movie if you've already seen it, or if you're planning on seeing it, or if you're on the fence. And maybe I convinced you. I don't know. I hope I did. Uh, but please, leave a comment. And uh, join me again uh, for my next video, whatever that may be. Uh, but until then, this is Xandros signing out. See you later.